Hey, welcome to another episode of Behind the Picture. It's me, Cardi. It is a Sunday. And I decided to do something a little different today. I decided, let's get into some motivation. Let's get into some motivation because photographers that follow me, photographers that leave comments, photographers that are DMing me, sometimes motivation is exactly what they need. And every once in a while on a Sunday, I think, I think motivation is necessary. So today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna go through some motivation, some motivation to inspire, 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 inspire. How many of you, by the way, at home got a little messed up by the time change? The clock's going ahead. Now it's two o'clock, but really it's one o'clock. Did you get messed up by the time change? I hope not. Thank you, by the way, for watching me live. I appreciate you. Let's get into what I call this week's inspiration. Inspiration, motivation, because it's necessary. That's what we're doing today. If something that I say to you today motivates you, I want you to leave a comment. If something today motivates you, I want you to leave a comment. And also all of these motivational quotes that I'm sharing with you today, I've made as screensavers. So as you'll see here on my desk, I changed my screensavers. So you see here, I have these beautiful, beautiful motivational screens, screensavers. So let's get into some motivation for a Sunday. Every photograph you make is a lesson. Each photograph that you make is a step towards mastering your craft. There's no such thing as a wasted photograph. Progress over perfection. Don't get hung up on perfection. Celebrate your progress, no matter how small. Your unique vision matters. Welcome, Marcus. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Only you can capture the world through your lens. Your perspective is unique and your perspective is valuable. Comparison is the thief of joy. Focus on your journey, not other people's journey. Your path, your path on this photography journey is yours and it's yours alone. Your creativity flourishes in your persistence. Keep pushing through all your challenges. This is often where the most creative breakthroughs actually happen. Mistakes are growth in disguise. Every mistake is an opportunity to learn and become a better photographer. Let's go, Mercedes, with the $10. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Shoot persistently because the race is hard. Learn consistently because the race is long. Patience is your ally. Great photography skills aren't built overnight. Be patient with yourself and be patient with your progress. Inspiration for your photography business is everywhere. Keep your eyes open. Inspiration for your next great photo can come from the most unexpected places. Inspiration for your photography business can be found from looking at photographers that are working and winning already. Stay curious, believe in your work. Always be willing to try new techniques and explore new concepts. Curiosity 
is the heart of creativity and trust in your artistic instincts. Your vision and your style will evolve and resonate with others. Celebrate your victories, big or small. Every win, whether it's a successful shoot or mastering a new technique, is a step forward. So celebrate all your wins, no matter how big or how small. Rejection is not failure. Rejection is not failure. It's a redirection. Use it to refine your approach and strengthen your resolve. Stay connected. Engage with the photography community. Support from peers can be incredibly motivating. You can also, you can also be supported. Your work can impact the world. Your photographs have the power to tell stories, to evoke emotion and to make a difference. Your work can impact the world. Run the race that is set before you. You're the only person that's in it. Everyone's life's journey is unique and should be na navigated individually. How can you be looking left and right when you're the only one in this race? Keep your passion alive. Keep your passion for this craft alive. Always remember why you started photography. Let your passion for capturing moments drive you forward. The desire to win is innate. It's built into us. There's a fundamental human drive to succeed and triumph in our endeavors. The desire to win is innate. You can win or you can worry, but you cannot do both at the same time. There's no mutual exclusivity of worry and victory. You need to choose one or the other. You can't do both. God gave us a way to win and you win the race you're in. You have to understand there is spiritual guidance that's all around us and the possibility of our victory in our personal struggles is there. You just have to start. Faith is the foundation of every accomplishment. You have to believe in yourself and trust that you'll achieve your goals. That's faith. It's not religion. That's faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. This is a biblical definition of faith from Hebrews 11.1. It highlights the importance of the unseen and the hope for. Now faith is something that you only have when you allow yourself to enter a now that requires you to have faith. You have to embrace the moment, the moments that challenge you, that challenge your faith and acknowledge that real faith is exercised in present challenges. Now faith, you have to have faith today. Believe in yourself. When? Believe in yourself now. Faith is where I stand on the things I expect while I prove the things that I cannot see. You do this every time that you go out and make a photograph. This describes faith. You're standing in an expectation of proof beyond visible evidence. You have not seen the photographs that I'm going to make but I have faith that I'm going to make amazing photographs. Everything that feels bad is not bad. And everything that feels good is not good. This is a profound statement on the nature of experiences and their value beyond your immediate perceptions. The pain that you're in is just a distraction. The difficulty 
a distraction. Replace your distraction with focus. Focus on your end goal rather than getting bogged down by the challenges that you're going to face along the way. If you're like most people, you've spent most of your life using your greatest superpower against yourself. You have to understand, you can call on and recognize and harness your own inner strength instead of letting them work against you. Frames create focus. This is what we do with photography. We walk around the world with just our eyeballs, but then we open a camera. We open up a camera. We open it. We point ourselves with camera in hand and frame something. Once we frame it, it gives it perspective. Framing, framing our perspective determines our focus in life. Frame, frame your perspective. Replace the anxious apprehension of the outcome that you don't desire with the joyful anticipation of the outcome that you do desire. It's a powerful strategy for positive thinking and manifesting desired results. Stop thinking bad things are gonna happen to you. Stop thinking that. Start thinking that great things are gonna happen to you. Your unique vision is a gift. Share it boldly. You have a unique way of seeing the world that no one else has. Embrace it. Let it guide your photography. Your distinct vision is a gift, not just to you, but to everybody who gets the pleasure of seeing your photographs. Inputs create outputs. It's a simple yet profound reminder that our efforts and actions directly contribute to our results, directly. You get in, what you get out, what you put in. Every great photographer was once a beginner. I promise you, every great photographer started from the start. Your time is coming. Remember, every expert started at the start, just like me. Your journey might have ups and downs, but with each click of the shutter, you're getting closer to greatness. Keep pushing. Your, definement, your defining moment, your defining moment is on the horizon. Let us lay aside the burdens and the sins of doubt. Doubting yourself is a sin. You gotta shed that doubt and other hindrances to fully embrace your power. Fully embrace the belief in yourself. Lay aside doubt. Mistakes are not failures. They're stepping stones to mastery. In photography, as in life, mistakes are inevitable. Don't view them as failures. Instead, see them as valuable lessons that are shaping you into a master photographer. This is powerful. You can win or you can worry, but you absolutely can't do both at the same time. You have to reframe your disappointments. You have to alter your perspective to see setbacks as opportunities for growth. Every mistake is a learning experience. Your next session could be the best one ever. Your best one. Keep pushing. The potential for an amazing photograph is always there. Each new photograph brings you a chance for something extraordinary. Keep your enthusiasm high and stay ready for that perfect image. You have to create it and you have to keep trying over and over again. Patience and persistence outshine natural talent every single time. Every single time. 
Patience and persistence outshine natural talent every single time. If you have natural talent and you're patient and persistent, you cannot fail. Talent is a great start, but patience and persistence are what carry you through. The consistent effort and dedication to improving your craft will lead you to achievements beyond what your talent alone can provide. Your talent alone isn't enough. Embrace every challenge. Everyone, every challenge. It's an opportunity to shine brighter. Embrace every single one. Trust in your vision. Your perspective is unique and valuable. You have to believe in your vision. Trust your instincts. Your perspective is unique and it adds something special to the world of photography that only you can. Only you can add this and only you can see this. Your lens captures more than just images. It captures dreams. So dream big. With your, capture, with your camera, you're not just capturing moments. You're capturing dreams. Not just your dreams, but the dreams of your subjects. So dream bigger and let your dreams and your camera bring it to life. Cherish every learning moment. Every single learning moment, every fail is a learning moment. So cherish it. It's crafting you into a master photographer. Masterful. Each photograph you make, that's bringing you closer to perfection. You're never going to achieve perfection, but each photograph you make, it brings you one step closer. Photography is the art of seeing. Keep your eyes and your mind open. A big part of photography is the ability to see the extraordinary in the ordinary. Keep your eyes and your mind open to the world around you. You never know where inspiration is going to strike. You have a superpower. That superpower, the ability to believe in only favorable outcomes. The ability to expect only favorable outcomes. That is indeed a superpower. The problem is, is that we at times think that bad things are gonna happen. We believe it. And because we believe it, that's what happens. And then it reinforces that bad things happen to us. And then we go out again and we believe, I'm not gonna do anything great. And then guess what happens? We don't do anything great. If you expect only favorable outcomes, favorable outcomes happen. In photography, every dance of light and shadow has a story. Find it, frame it, capture it. Light and shadow are the essence of photography. So look for the stories that they tell, the emotions that they evoke, and let them guide your creative process. Each play of light is an opportunity for a unique capture. Keep capturing your world. Your work matters. It matters. <laughs> your photography contributes to the beauty and the understanding of the world. Your work, your photography, your painting, your art contributes to the beauty and the understanding of this world. So you have to keep making it. You have to keep capturing, keep sharing, and know what you're doing is making a difference. Motivating? Motivating? You know that your creativity is limitless. So you have to let it flow without fear. Fear is incredibly limiting, but your creativity is limitless. So you have to let your creativity flow. Your creativity will overshadow any fear. Let it flow without that fear. So 
that is some motivational quotes for you to get yourself going, you know? How many of you felt something there that was, yes, the kind of motivation that you needed to hear today on a Sunday? And again, the funny thing is like, people find me for many different reasons. People find me because they want photography, education. People find me because they're brand new. They're literally brand new and have, they see somebody who's confidently talking about being a photographer and as a photographer and, oh, I'm gonna listen to this guy. But the amount of work that it takes, the amount of prep that it takes, the amount of mindset shifts that it, has, it takes to actually be a working pro photographer, how good your work has to be. The sad thing is, is many people's work isn't at that level, but they're not doing the work to make it better. Picking up a camera and learning how to capture learning apertures, shutter speeds, ISOs, focus. It doesn't make you a photographer. Sadly, it doesn't make you a photographer. It makes you able to take photos. It makes you able to take photos. But what I teach is making photos, meaning you have an idea and then you execute the idea using photography, using light, using juxtaposition, concept. Like you can tell me an idea for a photo and then I can make it. Many photographers cannot do that. They can't do that. That's okay. Shoot a model on white. I want the the light to kind of wrap a little bit around them. I want it to be bold, confident, vertical for a cover, but also give me beauty horizontal for a double page, um, double page opening spread. So you want a cover and you want a horizontal double page open, and you want it shot to white with like bleeding light wrapping around them. Um, mm -hmm. And what do you see the fashion being like? Uh, the fashion's gotta be streetwear, streetwear. So um, modern streetwear, norm core, how do you want it to be? Oh, modern streetwear. Okay, well modern streetwear can kind of be anything. So I'm gonna need some visual references to make sure that we're aligned because I wear modern streetwear and what I'm wearing might be different. So let's make sure our perception of what modern streetwear or edgy or cool is let's make sure that we're both aligned with what your definition of modern streetwear and what my definition is so then bring a mood board so now the mood board comes out and they send some of those photos and i send some of those photos and together we collectively come up with what the light looks like what we pick the model and we show the model the mood board so the model has ideas as to what the poses should be like and then we book the day. We book the day, we go to the, the shoot, and then I execute. I execute the idea. That's making photos. That industry is every advertisement you've ever seen. Every magazine cover you've ever seen happens that way. So if you're walking the streets with your camera, just taking pictures of things that you see, flower, bird, tree, street photography, this, it's like, cool but understand that you're not doing any reps on executing ideas for yourself or for other people because other people have their own ideas and if you don't go through the reps of executing ideas then when someone says hey i have an idea for a photo or can you take my picture you look to them like what do you want me to do and they're like oh well can you take and then you are just like this Click. Okay. What next? Click. Uh huh. Okay. What next? And their model is po the model's posing or your subject's posing. They have no idea what they're doing. You have never done this because you don't make pictures. You take pictures. So when a subject's in front of you and they're like, and doing the most ridiculous poses because you don't know those are ridiculous poses because you're trusting that the person calling themselves model knows what they're doing but they don't, but you don't know that because you don't know what you're doing either. And then you just photograph these whack poses. The girl thinks they're great. You think they're great because you don't know. And then you put that work into the marketplace. Taking pictures. It's like you're in a situation where you could have been making pictures, idea and execution, but it's just two people coming together, neither one of them knowing what they're doing and then just screwing around. Okay. And then those photographs I review. So 
it's hard. It's hard. It's a hard thing to hear. But understand that if you don't get good at executing other people's ideas and executing your own, you won't work. You won't. Or you'll work for people who don't know, meaning moms who who just want you to shoot pictures of their kid, or you'll end up taking pictures of things that are inconsequential that don't necessarily aren't like industry things. And again, every not everybody wants to do work in the industry at the level that I do. Not everybody wants to do that. And I understand that. That's totally fine. But understand that some of the methods that I talk about, whether you're doing it at the highest, highest level, making $10,000 a day, or you're doing it for families and your friend, like there's still a way that you have to work. And also doing stuff for families and friends, especially like there's no, there's no money there. There's no money. Like, and it's okay if, if you're okay with just like, like scratching by, I mean, it's okay. But the hard thing is, is like some people, some people, this is their dream. Some people, this is their life. This is their livelihood. This is their future. And the amount of money that you could make with your creativity can create generational wealth generational wealth like wealth that it's not just like you're okay but like you're okay your wife's okay your wife's family's okay your kids are okay your kids kids are okay like would you not want to create generational wealth would you not want to change the trajectory of your family's existence from from this point on like it's not and that's not that's not ego that's not greed it's just it says in the book it says in the book that like we're supposed to be bringing value to people and that value is exchanged for money. If you bring lots of value to people, you should be richer than the most richest people in the world. But sadly, the people who are the richest people in the world today, some of them are rich from bringing value. Other people are rich for doing very bad things. So you got to choose like your battles. For me, I make money ethically. I'm a photographer who does it ethically. I just charge market value. I charge market value and also I'm kind of good. So because I'm in the higher end of the market, I'm able to charge accordingly. So you can too when you get to that point. But so many people are self-defeating. They're afraid to charge. They're afraid to like ask for money. They're afraid to say, hey, what's your budget? You know, and if it's like <laughs> they're afraid to say, oh, for what you're asking, that's $5,000 because they don't know. They don't know Mark and they're like that's $500. And then the person's like, "Sure. Sure, I'll do it for $500." Cuz they know, the client knows, but the client's not going to tell you a job is worth $5,000 when you say, "I'll do it for 500." My first advertising job, I did for $1,500. It was a $15,000 job. 15,000. I was 19, 20 years old. Huge advertising job. I did it for 1500 bucks. And I didn't charge usage. It was a national campaign, national campaign, went in subways everywhere, transit shelters, what it would have been like $15,000 job, but I didn't know. And I didn't have somebody coaching me on how to quote. So I did it for 1500 bucks. That advertising agency took advantage of me, literally hired me, took that work and then didn't hire me again ever because they knew that they screwed me. So if I now show up five years later with the knowledge that I know that they took advantage, like. They just now don't want to see me because they know they screwed me. See what I mean? So actually working like for way under market value and not knowing what market value is actually screws you so much because someone will take advantage of you and then they'll never they'll run from you and they'll never deal with you again because they don't want to show face that like they took advantage of you because once you learn, you can be like, hey, remember that job we did eight years ago for a thousand bucks? I look back that that should have been like 20K, right? Yeah, probably should have, but hey, you were new, took advantage, as if someone's gonna say that to you. So, Stephen C says, cowards will be cowards. So, you gotta know, like, there's no one out there fighting for you. Nobody. You have to fight for yourself. There's no one out there speaking for you. You have to speak for yourself. There's no one out there representing anything for you. So, you have to represent yourself. So, and yes, it really can discourage creatives. So um, for the next little, for the next 30 minutes, guys, I am going to do something again different. I'm gonna do something a little different. I am going to do some time on anything that you want me to talk about. So all you need to do is do the command question in chat. And by the way, if you're a subscriber and new, thank you for hanging out with us today. I appreciate you. If you're a subscriber and new, 
um, you can talk in chat. Just type Command Q and then ask me a question. I will do. Um, I will do any. I'll do. I'll do five minutes or ten minutes on anything, any topic regarding professional photography. Regarding, I don't want to talk about aperture, shutter speeds, exposure, or anything regarding like basic stuff. But if you're talking about photography business and about elevating your business, dealing with clients or anything like that, like motivation, if you need that, hit me in chat and I will do 10 minutes on anything. So, huh, sorry, by the way, guys, today, I, I didn't make the thumbnail until like 1.15 for a two o'clock stream because I was up late. <clears throat> Up late, man. Working. Always working on stuff. All right. So, anyone have anything that you want me to talk about? And yeah, the detect the, uh, the um, daylight savings time messed with a lot of people. That's all right. So, imagine. I'm going to do 10 seconds or 10 minutes on... You guys got to give me some topics that you want me to talk about. Okay, I, I'll just make my own then. I'll just make my own because I have some. I have some. Question? Question? Um, who? that's a great one, Steven. I mean, Tony. Uh, let's get into that. I'm going to answer that for you. Um, how can a photographer stay current with knowing the current states or the current market rate um okay so is the question how can a photographer stay current with knowing the current market or without knowing the current market rate is that what you're talking about um you have to ask other other photographers and and people wonder like why networking is important networking is important because you get to talk to other photographers you get to talk to other photographers about what they're doing what they're charging and you have to make friends with these photographers because people why would they tell you like i charged 10k for this you know like when he like you have to understand like rates are something that is minutia i'm very transparent with the rates that i charge i'm very transparent but the minutia is that many photographers aren't very transparent with the rates that they charge so like I'm gonna do something for you and, and understand that you need to know what market value is. If you don't know what market value is, how can you possibly charge it? How can you possibly charge it? How could you even know like how to quote if you don't know like, ah, <sighs> folks, here, let me show you this. I just need to uh, do a couple things here, like... Okay, so... Do that. I do that. Um... This. This. Sorry, I'm just redacting. I'm just redacting um, because um, I just I think that it's important that I keep some privacy here, you know, because people can screenshot shit. So um, I'm going to show you what a quote looks like. Um, here, look at this. So this shows you what a quote looks like. And this is a quote that's $52,900. And it says, I'll just read it for you. It says, one day B-roll on location at $5,000 a day, including gear and edit. Day two video on location at $5,000 a day, including gear and edit. Two days stills on location at $3,000 a day. Five days assistant at three fifty dollars a day. Five days digital kit, lighting, location kit at two fifty a day. Sixty finals at fifty dollars a final. 
full usage bundle, 60 images, buyout, discounted outdoor print online POP, $25,000. Two travel days, $100 a day. Two travel days for my assistant, $50 a day. Four nights in a hotel at $150 a night. Day rate, $5,000. Day rate times two, that's $15,000. Now add another six, add another 17, 50, add another 1250, add another 3000, add another 25,000, add 200, add 100, add 600 equals 53,000 bucks. Happens pretty quickly. Happens pretty quickly. And guess what? Paid in full. Paid in full. So you this isn't this isn't egos, this isn't icons, this is market value. Discounted market value. If I did that at market value, that would have been 70. 70 if I did it at market value. So I've worked for the client for a couple of years. They got a discount. They always get discounts if they're like repeat offenders. So um, I see some people are asking some questions, Question. um, but not getting it right. <laughs> So, um, yes. Um, so you understand, like, are you, have you ever charged for your digital kit? Charge for your laptop? Laptop? Tethering? I charge for tethering. If you want me to tether, it costs another $1,000 for me to tether. So I charge for my camera. If you want me to bring my super expensive rig, you want me to bring my expensive rig? All my lights cost money. <laughs> you got to rent that for me because I own it. So you got to rent it for me because other photographers who don't own the gear, they rent it and the client pays for it. I own the gear. So client rents it for me. You see, it's standard industry standard, but it's like you need to be dealing with a certain level of client in order to be doing that. Because you start telling Mary that she needs to pay for your gear, she's gonna be like, what are you talking about? And even if this is like whoosh, over your head, what I'm talking about, charging for, re like you rent your gear to your clients when they hire you, you, they pay for the studio. Even if it's your studio and you pay rent, when they shoot in the studio, they rent the studio from you. You charge that to them. <laughs> That's why I don't carry a studio. Because every time I shoot in the studio, the, stu the client just pays for it. So why should I pay for it the days that I'm not shooting in it. That's insane. Someone else has to pay for the days that I'm not shooting in it. So my relationship with studio, like if I'm in a studio, the entire studio runs better. So you need to pay me to be in a studio every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it's not mine. So yeah. Um, so how to start charging market rates? Miss Jennifer with the very, very, very off question asking and no understanding of <laughs> like Steve says it every single time do it exactly like this how to start how to start charging market rates for family members or should I for family members people who are your family you're trying to charge market rate for people who are your family you don't charge your family and your family shouldn't be paying you market rates like your family doesn't pay and in fact you, your family shouldn't even be a perception of someone who's your client. You're not working for your family and like charging them back for you shooting photos. These are your loved ones. Work for strangers. Work for people who you don't know. So you can charge market value. Work for free for your family. Just you're practicing with your family. It's inconsequential if that's what you need. In fact, Miss Jennifer, um, don't charge your family. Work for them for nothing. Unless they're starting a business and you're helping them start their business then you charge them a discounted rate. Charge them a discounted rate. They're your family. You know? Maybe when they blow up, they can give you a little bit more. You know? But re like, work, work a relationship with your family. It's like me charging my brother for something. Like, no, I don't charge my brother for anything. I mean, he pays me. But it's like less. Like, don't. I give him money back or try to. But he buys my merch. He supports. Like, you know? He's like, I want a t-shirt. I buy it. You know? But... Yeah, don't charge your family. Um, if that if that was your exact question. Um, so what next? What next? Who else has a question? Um, I need you need the logic behind charging for tethering a thousand dollars. Okay. Um, here's the deal. 
you're a client. You have a like huge uh, clothing line that you're trying to photograph. Part of the expenses is tethering charge because you need to see the stuff all the time. And if you're paying me to shoot your lookbook, 10th K, I can literally shoot to card. I can shoot to card and I see this stuff on the back of the camera. I show you like this and I keep going. You can save a thousand dollars. If I'll save you a thousand dollars if you want to do it that way. Cause for me, I don't need to tether Chris Robinson. I don't need to tether. Client needs me to tether. Client needs me to tether because they want to sit down and have a big monitor, like a huge monitor. So if you want me to bring, let me show you what I bring when I charge for tethering. If you want me to now bring my vertical tether monitor on a stand, this, okay. Set you up, have a digital tech, which costs me money to have a digital tech there to run. It costs me money to have a digital tech there to run the tether because I'm the photographer, I'm doing a photo shoot, I'm directing everything. So I'm not also sitting in front of my computer, making sure the camera's connected, making sure all of that stuff is happening. Somebody else does that. They're called a Digitech. And it's not Jason, because Jason's my assistant and Jason needs to do assisting things. So that means there's another person. That person, they charge $500 a day, okay? They charge $500 a day. So. That's $500 of the thousand. I bring the laptop, that monitor on a stand, costs money for that stuff, and I gotta bring it. That's another $500. That's why I charge $1,000 for tethering. Does that explain it? I'm a pro. It's like, <laughs> is that, does that help you, Chris, Chris Robinson? Guess what? Clients pay it because some people's tether fees are 2,500. Some people's tether fees are, th are, are thousands. Some people's tether fees are 1,500. But guess what? There are tether fees. People pay them because people charge them. And it's because it's an industry standard thing because I don't need to tether, my friend. I'm a pro. I don't need to do that. The client needs me to do that. If you want me to bring all that other shit and hire this guy, it costs $1,000. Does that answer the question? <laughs> Does that answer the question? So, yeah. Less asked about finding new customers. Um, where's my brother, Les? Finding new customers. It depends on what you do. You have to use, you have to do research. Like, that's the whole point. Like, social media, people use social media to just scroll. They use social media to just see, like, what's happening, right? So, this is how Les finds customers. This is how Les finds customers. Les goes on Instagram. And Les goes and searches, Les is my brother, by the way. Les searches um, car collectors, car collectors, and then searches car collector pages. And then now, oh, now I have all of these accounts. Look, all car collectors. Look, all car collectors. Guess what Les does? Les paints classic cars. So here's all your clients, Les. Here's your clients. Simple, car collectors. And if you wanna do a, a tighter search, car collectors, Vancouver. There you go. That's how you find customers. You hunt them, hunt them, hunt them. You can do that by going on the internet, typing car collectors. You can go literally on Instagram and send DMs to people. And then you say, hey, how's the paint on your car? How's the paint on your car? How's your car paint? How's it looking? And they're like, Uncle Stu, thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. So they're like, not so good. My paint's not so good. And then guess what? You're like, you know, I'm the, I'm the mirror maker. I'm the best painter in the industry. The best car painter in the industry. Can I show you my work? And then you show the work and they're like, oh my God, holy shit, I didn't know you existed. And it's like, yeah, because I'm not marketing. I'm just waiting for you to find me and you haven't found me yet. So you go to them 
And then you send their work and they're like, yeah, but I'm in Seattle. And then you tell them, do you understand people have flown their cars from Germany here? People have flown their cars all around the world here because I'm the best there is. Do you want your paint to look like a mirror? You need the mirror maker. So this is how you find clients, Les. They're right here. They're on your phone. They're on Instagram. I hope that helps. Um, next, 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 next. Um, Question. Um, so I'm, that was my brother. Um, and, um, my mom, my mom, um, yeah, I try, I, exp I try to explain everything as well as I can. Um, so thanks for your time. Check my email. Uncle, Uncle Stu never given up. Um, you're about to retire the Nikon and get an R5. Nice, nice, nice. And of course you're very welcome for your support. This right here is Uncle Stu everybody donating ten dollars you definitely don't need to donate in order to get attention or for me to answer a question for you today but you definitely get some glory <laughs> if you if you do oh my goodness so um tony says that his dad and brothers collect and paint antique cars well you should um talk to my brother because my brother is going to start training people to paint the way that he does he he's been doing it for 45 years there's nobody who's as good as my brother he's the best in the industry um less is the mirror maker um chris using capture one um so <laughs> chris says using capture pilot for my clients either in studio or when they're overseas has worked charging for gear needs gear use needs no explanation and nice monitor okay so yeah the monitors the monitor is only a 1080 monitor um but what i did get i need to get this Darn, i got i need to get this monitor again um yeah i do have it as a separate fee and if they refuse to pay it or if they seem like they'd be they'd refuse to pay it i just bundle it in a different way i just bundle it into my day rates or i make my other rentals more expensive This is the game changer right here. This is the game changer right here. Hello. This. Look. Visa mount on the back of the monitor so you can put your monitor on a stand. Look at this. Visa mount on the back of a monitor. So this grip equipment I'm actually is from Amazon and I'm actually going to put this as a link on my website because it's a game changer. Vertical, horizontal, it's super solid. Like it's, it's like, uh, it's steel. You can turn your monitor any way. It's so sick. So yeah, just, I bought this. I think this was like $50 for this plate. But now it looks so pro and you don't have to put it on the tray because usually you have a shooting table and then the monitor is like all wobbly on the shooting table and someone moves it and the monitor falls off and it's a tragedy so having it on a stand and then i also i showed you my setup that i clamp this onto my c stand and i create a one stand when i'm making my youtube videos so i have this stand i have this grip to it i have my camera grip to it and i can just move it all the way around this room it's pretty dope um yeah so i bill for it <laughs> if you want i have so much gear i have so much gear like literally i think now i have about i'd say coming up on a hundred thousand dollars worth of gear so because of that, it's just, if you want me to bring this shit, dude, um, if you want me to lug this to the studio, I don't bring everything every time. If you need this, that's why I determine what I'm shooting before the day. Like, cause I don't like overpacking. I hate, I, I hate just bringing everything and then coming back and I used one thing or coming back and I shot natural light and I had all my lights, all my stands and everything, you know, it's frustrating. So, um, Ha! Huh. So, um, so, um, yes, Chris says he wants that. Um, 
So, um, so Salim, what's the top three expenses that you find new photographers have, in my opinion, um, non-essential? Oh my God. So what are the top three non-essential things that, that photographers buy when they're starting? Well, it's like this. This is a, that's a great, 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 great question. Here's the thing. Um, I have to find this because I wrote this out. I wrote this out actually, Slim. So this is a great, great, great question. Um, um, here it is. I got it. Beautiful. Here it is. So what is the three? This is what I see happen. And thank you for answering me this question. This is what I see happen. And I'm going to shift your question the top three expenses that I see new photographers have in my opinion are non-essential. Okay, I'm gonna shift this question a little bit. This is my answer. This is my answer. Um, too many photographers are majoring on the minors. Too many photographers are majoring on the minors and not minoring in the, <laughs> minoring in the majors like they're they're minoring on the majors instead of majoring on the minors so this is what majoring on the minors means they have killer gear no clients they have killer lights no lighting skills that's what that's what majoring in the minors is that's and that's that's the that's the top three things that i see i two i'm, I'm doing two but i'm saying three that's the top that's what i see i see photographers buying three lights they have no idea how to use one light but they have three that's what i see that's majoring in the minors i see photographers buying killer gear yet they don't know how to use killer gear because they think cameras take photos cameras don't take photos i promise you cameras don't take photos they don't you think they do but they don't here watch take a photo i'm telling it take a photo do it take a photo for me please please camera take a photo for me please it doesn't do anything this is just a tool this is just a tool like a paintbrush doesn't paint pictures for you paintbrushes don't paint pictures for you cameras don't take pictures for you Let's go, Jordan. Thank you for the $13.99. Jordan with the super chat. I appreciate you, my guy. Thank you. Very nice of you. Appreciate you, Jordan. Cameras do not take photos. They don't. They sit there. Watch. If I don't touch this, if I don't touch this, it will be there when I come back. It doesn't do anything, actually. It is just a paperweight. It's a paperweight. It's a tool. If I want to, if I want to point it at something with direction, an idea, now, now it's a weapon. But photographers get so wrapped up in the tools, in the tools, but they don't have a clue about the knowledge. No knowledge, but they got all the stuff. I got 30 lenses. And what lenses do they have? Let me talk. Oh, I have a 24 to 300. Really? You have a 24 to 300? Yeah, it's like 12 lenses in one. Wow. Okay. Wow. How many pros do you know shoot with a 24 to 300? A pro. How many? They shoot with a 24 and then a 35 and then a 50 and then an 85 and then a 100 millimeter macro and then a 135. I'm about to buy a 200 to 8. 200 to 8. F to 8. 200 millimeter lens. Prime. Four elements. Oh my God. But no, no. You shoot with your 24 to 300 that has 32 pieces of glass. 32 elements. 32 pieces of glass. It's called majoring on the minors. Here's another one kit lens they have a kit lens and they're going all in on photography with their kit lens and they're wondering like their photos are garbage they don't know that because they don't know what they don't know 
but they're using a kit lens, which is a 3.5 to f5.6 lens that has 16 to 22 elements in an 18 to 20, 45 or 55. And they're so, they're so soft. They're so soft. They cost $200. They're like the, the worst, lowest quality glass that any brand makes. They put on their kit lens, the lowest quality, everything. Cause all it is, is just, they just put it in the box so you can take a picture the day that you get it for Christmas. That's the only reason a kit lens was ever invented. So you could just have it in the box. So you can, on the day you can go, and then you're like, okay, now, so what lens should I buy? And then you buy your 50 or your 85 or whatever it is that you shoot. Not that like, no, no, no. But somewhere along the lines, salespeople just, they don't, salespeople don't care about you. Salespeople who are trying to sell you a camera, they don't care about you. That's why Fuji cameras and Sony, I mean, Sony is doing way better, but the brands, pro brands, Canon, pro brand, the top, top, top. Leica, Leica, Leica's starting. The lowest, Leica's elite level. Hasselblad, Leica, Ka Canon, then Nikon, then Sony that's, and it's like, as far as pro gear, those are the brands. If you're shooting with Panasonic or a uh, Lumix or uh, like any of these other Fuji, any of these other off brands, like cool, you can make photos with them. But again, people never want to hear this because they think that the camera that they bought is the best, obviously, because people are holding on to the tool. They think the tool is so important, the tool. If I learned that there was a different brand of camera that was a better, like the thing is, is like I'm invested in so many lenses. So like you, you invest in your camera. Like I understand that, but too many people don't do the research and they invest in the wrong brand. Pentax, there's another one. If you're buying a Pentax camera in 2024, Pentax hasn't been a, val uh, hasn't been a, 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 like a pro brand since the seventies. They haven't been a pro brand since photojournalism. Like they, at the K1000, there was the, 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 it's a learner camera. It's a learner camera. So as soon as you learn, you buy a Nikon F5, an F, like, cause that back in the day, you'd buy a Nikon F if you were a journalist. Or you'd buy a Canon AE1 if you were like trying to be like a different kind of, like. There's only two brands, the, the big brands. It's like Hasselblad, that's some pro shit. Hasselblad has never dropped into the level of being amateur stuff. Their cheapest camera is like six thousand dollars. So my my career, I built my career on Hasselblad. Hasselblad. So it's hard. People don't like to hear, but I speak truth, and it's hard. I speak truth, but truth is always an offense. Truth is an offense. Bob Marley said, "The truth is an offense, but not a sin. The truth is just there." Whether you like it or not, that's the hard part. The truth just stands there on its own, waiting to be discovered. Whether you like it or not, and the truth, people always try to pull the truth to their side. You think that there's two sides to the truth? There's actually three sides to the truth. There's your side, there's my side, and then there's the side of the truth that just stands there on its own, by itself. Everybody tries to pull the truth to their side, but the truth just is. So what I do is I shine a flashlight on truth. Just the truth. People don't want to hear it, but it is true. And I, I lose a lot of people. I lose a lot of people because I deliver things in a way that are straight to the point. I just don't have time. I'm 53 years old. <laughs> I've been doing this for 33 years. They don't have the time. And, and younger people, they need to be massaged. They need to be baby. They need to be like, you know, and it's like, I'm sorry, like, like your mom, that's what your mom is for. I'm not your mom. I'm just telling you the truth. And sometimes people don't want to hear it, which is totally fine. I am a truth pusher. More questions. More questions. So, um, by the way, if you are watching me live, thank you. Know that um, live streams are the best way to hang out with me because you can actually interact. This is why I have memberships. Members get to talk to me. Sunday is the only stream where everybody can talk to me. Is that Mark Fox? Let's go, baby. Is that Mark Fox? Let's go. Mark Fox. Mark Fox is an incredible photographer. Mark Fox has, has had his photographs on more. Mark Fox is a National Geographic level portrait. E ecological, like Mark Fox is back, baby. Mark Fox. 
Let's go. So glad you're here, Mark. And again, if Mark will do the pleasure of being a guest on my show or doing a Zoom call in for an episode of Behind the Picture or Ask a Photo Pro, you will talk to somebody who I literally grabbed from the internet. I saw him um, watching another, he was watching another show and I looked at, I saw he was very engaged in the stream and I looked at his work and this guy was like National Geographic level portrait photographer. And he lived in Ecuador. I think he's recently moved back to London, but he's a Brit who lived in Ecuador. Now he lives back home. And um, he's back for some more guidance, I'm hoping. And also, Mark, since the last time we've you've been watching, like some things have happened. Some things have happened. I've learned much and um, some new frameworks and some new methodologies. All right, that's Mark. So, um, Lorentu um, says, the truth is better than a lie. Even if it disturbs mentally, emotionally, it is Beth much better than a worthless lie. Absolutely. I can't lie. I actually have truth tattooed right here. It's here. It's here on my arm. Right here. Truth. And I also have Alpha and Omega, which is from Revelation, which is I'm the first and the last. I have, like, all my tattoos are... Um, are from Revelation. Question. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry to say, but yeah, I, all my tattoos are tickets to heaven. Um, so another question is, um, are competitions worth the investment? Yes, sometimes, sometimes no. Depends on the competition. Depends on the competition. It's just like all things, you can't generalize. And it's impossible for me to generalize, um, Stuart. It's impossible for me to generalize because if I generalize, what happens is, then I'm, then I'm, I'm literally just saying, I'm saying non-truths if I generalize. So in order for me to speak truth, are competitions worth the investment of resources? Yes. Yes. If it's American photo, if it's PDN, photo district news, PDN, like <laughs> applied arts. Like there are awards that if you win that award, that accolade attaches to your name for the rest of your life. You are an award-winning photographer. Some DNA D awards. Some of these awards are the most prestigious respected awards in the, in the world as far as the arts. Some are BS, absolutely BS cash grabs, cash grabs where like the level of work low, it's just a cash grab. And when the person who wins the distribution channels of that work, nobody sees it, so it doesn't matter. So you need to do the research on what contests are legit. Photoville, New York, legit. You know, what contests are legit and which ones are like, meh. And that's like, you have to discern that because that's part of what we do as people is we have to, we get emails. We have to discern, is that a real email or is that spam? Oh my God, my Netflix account is compromised. Oh my God, should I just like, click links and send all my information or should I check to see the email address and see if it's actually really from Netflix or if it's from some site that's just trying to scrape my information right so people even even people who up in up front it looks legit but you actually have to investigate in everything in life just a little bit more to see if it's real or bullshit it's just like me anybody who listens to me talk if you're smart and I'm gra and you're gravitating towards what you would do next is go to stevecarty.com. You would Google me. You'd be like, who's this Steve Cardi guy? And then you'd see, oh my God, Steve Cardi. Okay. And you'll see, like, I have nothing to hide. You can just Google me, Google, Google will tell you. There's like noisy magazine, Steve Cardi, Pharrell Williams, Steve Cardi. It's like, you'll see. So why am, I, why am I on YouTube? Because nobody on YouTube, like, there's nobody like me on YouTube. There's nobody at this level. Jonathan Mannion isn't on YouTube. Kareem Black isn't on YouTube. There's no photographers at this level that are talking and giving you the real. So that's why I'm on YouTube. I saw a hole in the market. Not enough established two decade, three decade pros are on YouTube sharing their knowledge. Not enough. Enter Cardi. That's why. So, um... <laughs> So, yeah, Mark Fox is no joke, right? Mark, uh, Stephen C. just said, I just peeped Mark Fox's website. And holy, and it's like, yeah, Mark Fox. Said, said, it's Mark Fox. And I even know it's markfoxphoto.com. 
because he's my friend. He's my friend. And it's like, look at Mark Fox. Mark Fox makes some of the most insane photography you have ever seen. Mark Fox used to watch me when six people watched me. Six people, Mark was here. This picture won photo of the week. Photo of the week. This is an incredible, incredible people, humanitarian, an incredible photographer. This photo has been on thumbnails. This is Mark Fox, baby. And I'm telling you, when I, when I get excited about viewers, it's because I can help. I can help. Mark Fox. Look at how Mark Fox shoots kids. So if you photograph children, look at how Mark Fox shoots children. He shoots them as if it's he's shooting them for a magazine. Everything that this guy shoots, it's like it's shot for National Geographic. Little love for brother Mark. Thanks for coming back, my guy. We talked. I talked to him about developing into an editorial, like shoot magazines, like that kind of, and you see, it's like, it's a method to my madness. And I've been doing this for three years. And there's, it's, it's great because sometimes people like life happens and they get busy. Other times it's like, they just get busy. They just start working, you know? Mark lived in Ecuador. Now he's back in the UK. Like life happens, you know? So majoring on the minors. Killer gear, no clients. Killer lights, weak skills. We can major. We can major on different minors. We can actually major on different minors. We can major on the majors. We can kill it with basic gear. Good camera body, 50 millimeter lens. We can actually use information. No photography school? No, but I, I, I listen to the right information. And they could use free tools. Do you edit with Final Cut? No, no, I edit in CapCut. Really? Yeah, dude, your videos look some amazing. You can use free information and free tools to dominate. There's a rise of the creative class. And if you're creative, you can dominate. So what type of niche um, would you classify um, Mark Fox as Mark is an editorial portrait photographer. That's what I would say. Mark is an editorial portrait photographer. I'm an editorial portrait photographer. He's the same. He's of the same niche as I am. He does it in a different way. He has a different style. He has a looser, more documentary style, but don't get it twisted. It's, it's editorial. It's editorial. He knows exactly what he's looking for. It's editorial. He's telling stories that most people just make photos. They don't tell stories and make photos. So Mark is evolving into a storytelling narrative, which is beautiful. So he's an editorial portrait that photographer. That's his category. So um, I hope that, I hope that helped. Um, so question regarding flashes, TTL versus manual. Um, you're not talking about flashes. You were talking about speed lights and Primo. Those aren't flashes. Those are speed lights. They run on batteries. They run on batteries, which means that's not pro shit. That's not pro shit. It's not pro shit. So if you're using one of these, yes or like, yes, like you're literally using this, this, this is what a speed light is. It's a flash bulb. And where's it going? On top of your camera? Or are you putting it in an umbrella? If you're putting it in an umbrella or a softbox, your speed light, and using a remote trigger to fire it, the trigger, $500. The speed light, $500. Do you know how much studio lights cost? A head costs 
$200 for the real shit that you're actually supposed to attach umbrellas and stuff to, and then they plug into the wall. So when you fire, F8, 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 F8. Speed light, fire, F8. Okay, fire. Oh, guess what? You needed 5.6 because it'll fire without it being back to 100% power. And you're asking me, TTL or manual? No, no. Studio strobe and light meter, primo. I've never said TTL. You've never heard me say on this channel, TTL. You've heard me say light meter lots. And you've, and you've never seen me actually use speed lights because they're for hacks. Here, they're for hacks. Here's where mine lives, right here. Here's where mine lives. This, it lives here in the bin with all my other equipment that I don't use. This, so you're talking about this? So should you use this TTL? You should do this to that. Do like this, watch, do like this. Throw it away and learn how pros shoot. Seriously, learn how pros shoot because pros don't use that shit. Sh pros use real shit, which is studio lights. I'll show you. So if you're trying to be a photographer and you're using amateur shit, like wedding photographers use that stuff, the reason they use, uh, use speed lights is because you shoot weddings and you're out and it's like, I can't plug in, I gotta be on the move and blah, 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 blah. But if you're thinking that a speed light is light, that's not what it is. It's not what it is. That's amateur shit. So um, again, go to my list. Go to stevecardi.com slash gear. And then here you'll see the gear of a 30 year pro. You'll see the gear of a 30 year pro. And in fact, secret time, I don't even list that flash that I just threw on the ground as something that I own because I don't use it. So if you look at camera bodies, you'll see the cameras, photography and video. These are the cameras that I use. R5, I have two R50s, all my lenses. And then you'll see my audio equipment and you'll see my computers and then you see my monitors and you'll see my storage and my cards and my readers and my retouching tablet and my chair. But then you come over here to this side and you see strobes, studio flash, Ellen Chrome, ELC 500 self-contained flash head with reflector, two of those. Oh, sorry, one of those, two of those. And then you'll see this, which is something that I recommend, which is a studio light, studio light, studio light. And then you'll see, um, video lights, like you, you buy the, the proper equipment for the thing. So if you look at this and then you search Godox studio light, oops, let's buy this on Amazon. And then you type, oops, Godox, Godox studio light. Um, and then look here, right here. For $162, okay, for $162, you get a studio light, studio light, studio light. But let me show you this. Watch, this is what you're shooting, speed lights. This, these are garbage, garbage. I'll say it three times. And if you buy a Canon one, if you buy a Canon speed light, like the one that I have, the, the 560, it's like $500. And then the trigger is like another $500. So why this is what you're mixing up. This is not what we do. We do not use these. These are for chumps. Okay. Sorry. If you're one of these, if you have one of those, you're a chump. This is what pros use. And this isn't even, this is Godox. This is Amazon level. I use Ellen Chrome. Ellen Chrome, they don't even have that on, they don't even have that on this, on this thing. Ellen Chrome. So this is, this is, again, this isn't even super high end. This is what I have as my rears. But then my main light, my main light, I have, oh, stop it with your subscribe. My main light I have is an ELC right here. Look at the price of this light. This is my main light, $24.99. This is my main head. Like that's the price of for two. I've had, I spent 1500 for my main head. 
So this is my main head. So my lights, I didn't even buy my lights from, from Amazon. Mine are, are this. So you have to understand your head space as far as light and strobe and studio and, and like, like manual versus TTL. It's like, this isn't TTL shit. This is light meter stuff. Like there's no TTL on these. You j just gives you light. And then you put a modifier on it and you set your light meter and you do it the way that pros do. So um, I try, I'm trying not to entertain questions. I mean, I'm trying to explain and give you the, the, the understanding. Like too many people spend so much time and so much money buying the wrong stuff because they don't know. They don't know. So, oh, S Slim asked me, like, what are one of the three things that photographers buy that they shouldn't? There's the first one, speed lights. They, they buy flashes, they buy this. They buy this, this guy, and then they put on a Gary Fong and then they're wondering why their photos are stupid or look like everyone else's. <laughs> so um, that's why. So I have this list. Everything that I use is here. Light meter, it's, it's meter right here. It says meter, meter. Cause that's how you meter the light with flying your shooting flash. That's how you do it with a light meter. So um, modifiers. All my softboxes. I list all the different modifiers that I use. And I own all this stuff. So, um, yeah, it's just like, and even my, my camera support, my tripods, my C-stands, like everything, like I include every single thing. Like you can see this stuff behind me. I have everything that I, like, it's, if, if I got it from Amazon, it's on that list. So no speed lights. Um, and it, Fabian, it's not important for photographers to list their gear on their websites. It's not important. It depends, it depends on where you're at. For me, I have an audience. I have an audience like you who are constantly asking me, hey, what light do you use? What this do you use? What this do you use? And understand, I just put this list on my website literally a month ago because I was getting asked so much that why not just make an entire list of everything that I shoot and give you affiliate links for every single thing. So if you actually want to buy one of the things that I have, like my R5, you can just go on Amazon and buy it. And maybe I can get a little commission about it, you know, because you're asking me, right? So that's why photographers who have YouTube channels have gear lists, it's because you trust me, you like my work, you think that I'm an authority, so you want to know what I use. So that's why they have gear lists. If it's just regular, or just a regular photographer without a YouTube channel, without an audience, like there's no point in you telling the world what you shoot with. For me, there is. So it just depends on, that's the reason. That's the reason. Like that's why when you see like Casey Neistat, he might not have it, but you look at like Peter McKinnon and maybe he does because Peter McKinnon can benefit from the, um, from the affiliate links if you want to buy something that he has because you think he's... Ah, <sighs> so, um, Romeo, I understand for people who are just starting the 50, the $1,500 light is a lot. I understand. That's why I showed you the Amazon light that cost a hundred dollars, right? That's why I showed you the Amazon light first that cost $160 in comparison to the speed lights that cost so much more. Then I said, what I do, my lights are up here because I'm a, I've been doing it for three decades and I've, I've been able to upgrade and the cost of lights, Amazon didn't exist when I started. So there was only camera stores. So because of that, camera stores were very expensive. Like you had to buy into the equipment in order to be a pro. So now the price of entry to be a pro, everything has come down. <clears throat> and because everything has come down, anyone who just had a whim and wants to be a photographer can just buy up all this shit, but they don't have the knowledge to use it. And that's why they find me. For me, it's frustrating because you should have the skills and the talent and then you find me and then you learn what it is that you need as you're on your journey. Too many people just buy stuff. They don't even know what they need. They just buy stuff because they think maybe they'll need it. They don't even know how to use it, which makes it even more painful. Um, yeah. Um, in invest in good modifiers. You're calling to change your flashes. You're called to change your flashes, not your modifiers. Yeah, like... I mean, I've had, I've had so many modifiers over the years, but again, it's just like, you, you just learn what it is that you like, the type of light that you like and the modifier, like 
to understand like whether I'm using one softbox that's a 30, 30 blah, 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 buy this, buy this. It's like if it's the same specs, whether it's this brand or this brand, you try to buy the more expensive one because it's going to last longer. Always. You buy the more expensive one because it's going to last longer. I like to buy things once. Once. So the heads that I have, I will just own them forever. I don't have to worry about buying new ones unless I want to update, you know, which sometimes happens. And now that all the modeling lights are now LED lights, now that the modeling bulbs are LED bulbs, now having light bulb style modeling lights doesn't really work anymore. So eventually I'll upgrade, you know, that's how it goes. But I'll upgrade to, um, I'll upgrade to Ellen Crow. I won't upgrade to like something from Amazon when it comes to my lights. So, uh, and again, absolutely. Kevin says, um, Scotty at Tin House is a, a food and beverage shooter. Of course, he's a food and beverage shooter. It's different than a fashion shooter. For me, I'm a portrait shooter. Although I shoot fashion, I don't call myself a fashion photographer. I'm a portrait photographer. Guys, I hope today brought you value. Hope today brought you value. Um, <clears throat> hope today brought you value. Um, Stephanie, thank you for watching me live today. I appreciate you. Um, April, wedding photographers use speed lights and smaller LEDs. Um, no, I said, Apresh, I said early, unless you're a wedding photographer. Don't, I said, unless you're a wedding photographer, those are the only people who need speed lights. Those are the only people. And even still, if I was a wedding photographer nowadays, I would create like, I'd have a studio area. If I was doing a wedding, I had one area where I have a seamless background a gray seamless studio light so I could do a Vanity Fair style portrait of the bride and groom. And then I would sh bring them in, do a Vanity Fair style portrait of them on that light. But then I'd have my speed lights to be able to walk around with a Gary Fong and like shoot things happening. Like that's what it's for. And again, I said at Presh, I said, wedding photographers need to move around and they're dealing in situations where the light is changing and every like, like, Wedding photographers are the only kind of photographers that actually need speed lights. They're the only ones. So don't misconstrued what I said, because I started with that. I said, you need a speed light if you're a wedding photographer. If you're not, then you do not. All right. So um, guys, I think we're gonna wrap up. I have my weekly check-in in an hour for my masterclass. Um, and by the way, I use smaller LEDs, which we weren't even talking about. I have one right here. Like this, this, be, this is also necessary, you know, like this is not just wedding photography stuff. This is just light. This is product photographers use this, like portrait photographers use this. I use this like, so gear is gear. It's just people mix up speed lights for strobes because they're both called flashes okay i don't call flashes like flashes it's when someone says what flash do you use i know they mean speed lights because they don't know what they're talking about because if they knew they'd say what lighting system do you use that would be the dialogue that they'd say they'd say what lighting system do you use and i'd say well i use several i use i have an ellen chrome i have three of those and then i also have a whole bunch of video lights of a separate of different brands like i would talk that way and then they would say oh no like this thing i'm like oh no that's a speed light that's not a lighting system that's a speed light that's totally different i do i have that in case on the odd chance like a brother or a sister or like a family member or a friend, like they need me to like take a couple of snaps for them at a wedding or that kind of a thing. Sure, I'll throw that in my bag, grab my camera body and do them a favor. All right. So, um, yeah, I hope that brings you value. So, um, and then Primo says, yes, I think I made some wrong purchases. Everybody does. Everybody, everybody buys a couple of things in their career that they shouldn't have. I got, I have drawers full of <laughs> drawers full of it <laughs> drawers full of purchases that i shouldn't have made come on you just like i have tech boxes like boxes of tech that is just like here you want this anything it's like thousands of dollars worth of stuff it's like sorry all of this is all old tech i can't use it take anything that you want from here you know and i also like streamlining my tech i don't like having something that like there's nothing on my desk that i'm not using every day not a single thing from my smoke machine remote control 
to my memory card reader, to my, t my um, hub, my tablet, the lens caps for my two cameras. Like everything here is just, it's complete efficiency on my desk. It's complete efficiency. And also, um, there's no, there's, my desk is this deep. It's only 18 inches because I don't need more space. Yes this yes. is exactly what I need. So it makes it so I'm right up top on my monitors. And of course, you have to have an affirmation. You have to have... That's what I'll have in my account by December. That's my goal. So you have to have your affirmations, you know? I, I do it all the time. So guys, because this was a random stream and we and, and you guys are here with me and I got 74 people watching, we're gonna do something random, like which I like to do. Every, every, every month I give away subscribers and it's Sunday and because, um, I give away memberships because it's Sunday and it's the day that there's so many people who are watching me who are not members of this channel. I'm going to give away some memberships. You guys down? You guys are members, so you two don't even qualify. You and you, you don't get a membership. You don't get a membership either. So chill out. You guys aren't getting gifted, okay? <laughs> You're not. But yes for yes. some of you, for some of you, you actually are going to get gifted. This guy, I don't like this guy. You, get out of here. God fucking no. Move, leave, go. Bad vibes, okay. Now that we've cleared out, now that we've cleared out, now that we've cleared out, everybody, you guys ready? You guys ready? Uh, you ready? You ready? Hmm. And it, hey, this is a bonus for people hanging out until, <laughs> by the way, chat controls my stream. If you're just putting two and two together, chat, if you are watching me live, there are commands that you can do to control my chat. It's kind of fun. Um, yeah, which is what these guys are doing right now. At least they're waiting for me to stop talking, to stop doing my presentation, to like glitch me. Hey, Zuri, you got gifted. Lloyd Simmons got gifted. DLG got gifted. DW DMW shots got gifted. Let's go. Zuri, you got gifted. Let's go. Lloyd Simmons was gifted. All right. So, guys, here you go. Some free memberships from yes, me sir, to yes. you. Now, you can chat in all my live streams. Tuesday, Thursday streams, photo review streams, my mindset streams, like those are members only as far as chatting. You can, everyone can watch, but talking to me, you gotta be a member. So I just gifted some memberships for you. Please consider becoming a member. It's what all the cool kids are doing. This podcast is brought to you by Cardi Crew Merch. Every piece you see, designed by the photographer you're currently watching. And let me let you in on a little secret. Meticulously hand-stitched by the arthritic grandmothers of our very own viewers. Well, uh, what? This creative community inspired this entire line. Your zeal okay, for artistry, your tireless dedication, and your individuality shines in every stitch and design. This isn't just another piece of clothing. It's a badge of honor for every creator out there. From what I see here, they are mostly just black t-shirts and hoodies. But you do you boo. You actually want me to read the rest of the script? Oh my god, who is this guy? From the nuanced patterns to the vibrant colors, everything has been designed keeping in mind the creative soul that lies within each one of us. Wow, who wrote that? There isn't a single pattern, not one. Oh my god, leave the There's commentary. There's hardly any nuance. But it says oh here, god, this, this merch represents more than just apparel. It's an emblem of our shared passion for creativity. Who wrote this? What absolute twaddle. Wow, this guy's a great supporter. All of this stuff is kind of basic, to be honest. But I'll keep that to myself. Okay. <sighs> Let the hey, world know you're Stevie a part C. of something bigger. With the a gift photographer bomb. on YouTube's go, clothing collection baby. that he actually has the balls to make a commercial about. Okay, what Sorry, is going what on? Sorry, what I meant to say is, a collective of photographers that celebrates and uplifts every form of creativity. Steven I am C. aware, as the narrator, Modest I'm not allowed mods. to insert Let's my own go. narrative. Thank you. But, holy moly, this is horrible. Wow. 
Join the movement, embrace your creative spirit with Cardi Crew merch. And yes, he is really calling this a movement. Be proud of your passion for photography. Be proud of your creative life. If photography is your life, flaunt it. The one paying for this advertisement has asked me to make a toast. Isn't this a podcast? Okay, it'll cost you another 20. Let's raise a toast to every photographer, artist, and creative out there. Thanks for being a part of this journey. This guy's so Did that suit you? That was absolutely ridiculous. Please don't make me read anything like that again. Back to the show. Ah, guys, new Cardi Crew merch right here. The new Cardi Crew dot matrix T. My logo. I, listen, I my um my creative coach Tim de designed this logo for me. He also made um the Cardi brand book. This is the Cardi brand book. So this is literally all about Cardi. This is how to use my logo several different ways. There's some philosophies. There's some of my quotes. What leads Cardi's soul? Cardi's soul is led by positive people with energetic qualities. From them, he's able to capture remarkable, personable, and raw moments of beauty, depth, and truth. Wow, oh, thanks, Tim. <laughs> so this is the Cardi book. So my Cardi brand book, in case I forget who I am as a person, in case I forget who I am as a photographer, there's a book I can go to. That's why you have coaches. Yeah, that's why you have coaches. Like it's, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. Like I actually have, there's like philosophies to like why I do and how I do the things that I do. And, um, my coaches helped me develop the Cardi method. They like new merch, baby. <clears throat> Anyways, thoughts become things, people, anything that you can put your mind to, like I'm living a life that I scratched on a piece of paper three years ago and I'm living it. And I'm telling you, all I want to do is help you get to the next level. All I want to do is see you succeed as a photographer. All I want to see is you leave your slave ship nine to five grind and become a 21st century solo content creator. I believe you can do it, but you have to believe that you can do it. Today's show is all about motivation curbed into a little bit of question answer, but all of this just to bring value to you. I hope it did. I love you very much. Please consider making clips. Please consider sharing this. Please subscribe if you've made it to the end of this podcast and are not. I appreciate you all. I hope today brought you value. This commercial free stream, of course, is powered by the Cardi Crew. The Cardi Crew members are strong. We are almost at 300. What? Almost at 300 strong. We are trying to get to 300 members and members power this channel. We have an active Discord where everybody hangs out. Please go to the Discord next. If you became a member recently, you're going to see your name scrolling across the top of this screen. My last 25 members get love. And by the way, if you became a subscriber today or recently, you're going to see your name scroll across the bottom of this screen. I dropped a new video on Friday, five obstacles that you must overcome in order to make it in this incredibly lucrative craft. Make sure you watch my latest videos. Make sure you watch all my videos because again, if you don't watch them, they don't get pushed into the algorithm and then nobody sees them. My subscribers aren't watching them, then people who aren't subscribing will never see my content. I love you guys. Thanks so much for your support.